Did you know Apple's Project Purple is responsible for BlackBerry's downfall? The world did not see it yet, but one person did. Of course, we're talking about Steve Jobs. The time when iPods were an end thing, where people loved iPods, the feeling of thousand songs in a pocket just blew your mind, was the time Steve Jobs realized that Apple cannot really be a product company, right? It has to be more than a product. It has to be much more than that. And his futuristic vision led him to the development of what we know today as the iPhone family. BlackBerry, on the other hand, was so unthreatened by the iPhone at first that a lot of its co-CEOs did not even believe a gadget so sleek, multi-touch gestures, full touchscreen display, and something looking like out right out of a movie, right? A gadget so cool can actually exist. They thought of it as a scam, did not really focus on what's going to come in the market which is sadly what led to the downfall of BlackBerry. It surprises me how a phone that had 10% of the market share in the year 2007, the company had to stop its hardware by the year 2016. Hello and welcome to the iGeeks blog show. I'm your host Harshanki and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about how Apple led to BlackBerry's downfall. Now, here's a myth that you may not be aware of. iPhones are not the successor to iPod, although iPhone did borrow the technology of iTunes from it. However, it is the development of the secret coded project called Project Purple and the growth of OS X that led to the development of iPhones. And this is where BlackBerry's downfall started. BlackBerry's evolution is quite an interesting journey itself. It started as a company in the year 1984. In the year 1999, they came up with the gadget 870, which was the pager. Yes, and that is what was BlackBerry's highest selling product. That is what helped BlackBerry establish itself as a market leader then. And a go-to handsy device that could help you check your emails, right? Because that is where the Silicon Valley lied and that is where the people of the future lied in. And that's what was BlackBerry's target group as well. By the year 2007, BlackBerry's phones had captured 10% of the market share and everybody wanted to have one of the Blackberries. I mean, the exclusive BBM charts, who doesn't remember that, right? Everyone, everyone used to flex about having a BBM. The phone was so secure. The QWERTY keyboard that came with it, oh my God, the infamous QWERTY keyboard. Yeah, it was quite of a hype back then. And that was what was... A secure, well-knit phone targeted towards IT professionals, towards corporates, towards entrepreneurs, towards business-minded people. That was the group BlackBerry was going for. Even Barack Obama had one of those. That was how popular the gadget had become. Now, you may be wondering why am I emphasizing over the year 2007? Because January 7, 2007 was the time when the first iPhone came into existence now, this is the time, again, this is the first time I'm repeating the same fact. 10% of the market share, BlackBerry have. By the first half ended of the year 2008, BlackBerry's market share had reduced by half because of iPhone's growing popularity, because of the sleek-looking device and the hype that was being created around the iPhone. Half, the market share was half. That is how bad the downfall was. Now, this began a financial crisis for BlackBerry and a lot of problems unveiled them. It was secure, sure. It was, the usability was high, absolutely. People loved using it because of the QWERTY display and the PBM, 110%. But there came a time when people started carrying BlackBerry and iPhones both whenever they had to. Eventually, keeping their Blackberries at home when they did not need it, which means, yeah, they never got out of the home and maybe people stopped buying the new Blackberries. That's how bad it was. Apple, when wanted to develop the iPhone, they got in touch with Verizon first. They wanted Verizon to be the carriers for iPhone. Obviously, Verizon wasn't going to do that. They weren't willing to take that amount of risk back in the days. And Steve Jobs' reputation was quite popular of bossing around people, of manipulating people to take their own opinions, right? Verizon was not the one to bulge in, and they never agreed. 
Singular, on the other hand, which is now rebranded into AT&T, was looking for an opportunity just like this because they were at a stage because of the rebranding and stuff. They wanted to take the risk. And this was the risk they were willing to bet upon. This was the risk which they were willing to take upon. 17 years from now, we can make jokes about how the initial days of iPhone were and how the AT&T as a carrier was unable to pick all the loads, right? It's getting so difficult for them as a carrier to just keep up with the demands. But see, now that wasn't just a problem uh, for AT&T. That is not an AT&T specific problem. That is a carrier specific problem. Considering the growth, considering the pace at which iPhones picked up, yeah, well, we're supposed to experience that problem even if it had been another carrier. This is where Verizon just knocked down BlackBerry's doors and they wanted BlackBerry to create something which would now be referred to as the iPhone killer. Oh, fun fact. Did you know one of the BlackBerry devices was actually labeled as Apple killer? If you didn't, we're going to talk about this and you probably remember about this. But coming back to the device, that was supposed to be BlackBerry's response after Verizon created a force on them to upgrade the device. Now, this is the device where I guess a bunch of BlackBerry designers must have just photoshopped all the good elements and like tried to make it sleek and interesting, impeccable and present it to the company. This was a device that was going to be a sort of tablet which could enter into the smartphone market and kill the competition. A lot of points are going to be discussed about henceforth, but here's an important factor that BlackBerry, that's a trend, okay? That is a trend that BlackBerry followed, which they shouldn't have done it. All of this led to the development of what came to be known as BlackBerry Storm, a product that actually sold really well, surprisingly sold really well, despite of the flaws that it had. And that is what the BlackBerry folks believed was going to put an end to Apple, put an end to iPhone, kill the competition like that. However, that did not quite turn out well, right? Now, for all the Apple geeks here, or for all the tech geeks here, this was secretly codenamed as Apple Killer 2. Yeah, that was the case. However, Storm just turned out to be a band-aid. And you know what happens with band-aids, right? I mean, if you don't remove the band-aid, you have to rip, it'll either fall off or you have to rip it off by yourself. Either way, it's the, the wound is going to get worse. The blood damage is going to get real. And this is where the shit got real. So with the increasing competition and uh, constantly degrading sales, of course, BlackBerry was coming to a point where they were experiencing financial crisis, gradually getting into the point where they still did not see it. Now, here was a perfect potential for BlackBerry to actually bank upon the things that they were good in and compartmentalize that so that they could have churned enough money to keep the businesses going. They could have churned enough money and respect. At this point, it was a combination of money and respect that BlackBerry needed as a company. See, Apple had iPod money. Apple had Mac money. Microsoft had Windows money. I mean, they've never had issues with Windows, right? Google had the AdSense money. Samsung? Well, Samsung was just a well-funded company. It could afford the damages. It could afford bearing the losses because they knew they're creating something huge and it's eventually going to pay off. BlackBerry had started facing problems of this kind. I, those were the days when even companies like Nokia couldn't bear a loss as big as this, right? Those were the days where if you had the fuck you money with you, only then you'd be able to consider losses. And BlackBerry used to be one of these companies, okay? Maybe that's why they decided to take a risk and did not really see the pile of problems like that was being created on the side. Now, this is just a competition in the market that we're talking about, okay? They, the sales had gotten down because of the increasing competition. However, Apple had developed the iPhone in secrecy, right? It was developed so secretly that the world wasn't aware about it when it came out. And this secrecy led to a place where BlackBerry, not just BlackBerry, any phone in the market had to keep up with the competition. Not just keep up with the competition, but fucking beat the competition at this point, right? If you don't do it, then you're going to fail miserably. And a lot of companies are facing this problem. Steve Jobs knew it. And that's how the iPad came into existence. Now, BlackBerry's idea of coming up with a tablet that would potentially kill Apple as a company from the smartphone industry, and now they have a fully grown iPad in the market as well, 
which was smooth as fuck back in the days right i mean people hadn't seen something like that keeping up with that let alone keeping up with that beating the competition provided with the factors external factors that was affecting blackberry's business as a whole turned out to be a huge problem for them Microsoft decided to let go of the exclusivity and licensed the exchange to Apple. Apple decided to let go of the exclusivity and made iMessage accessible. Although they also forgot about the goodwill for its carrier partners because iMessage just an iCloud sync it just saved a lot of things, right? That was again a blessing in disguise right there. So in this struggle and possibly a lot of ego clashes, BlackBerry actually forgot the things that it was selling that were its USPs. BBM Messenger. BBM right there was the top selling notch thing that everyone wanted, still wanted. Qwerty keyboards. Qwerty keyboards, if you think of a Qwerty keyboard, no one wanted to buy any other phone rather than having one of the Blackberries if they were looking for a Qwerty keyboard. Blackberry in order to give a competition to iPhone and now the iPad forgot to focus on this features time and again a lot of tech people back in the day a lot of people who were genuinely concerned for blackberry and could see the downfall could see the company going flunk within a year or so suggested them to stop keeping the blackberry exclusive to stop keeping the os exclusive to broaden its horizon but they did not understand eventually came a point where whatsapp literally copied everything from bbm and became a 19 billion dollar company and today we cannot survive without whatsapp well blackberry did get a hint in the later years and that's when they integrated themselves with android but by the time they took that step it was way too late and probably no one gave a shit about it they licensed themselves to tlc to come up with the hardware and keep developing the phone and that was when the android integration happened but the soul was missing at this point okay the soul was missing and the competition by then had overtaken it to such a great extent that now no one really cared about the phones the soul factor by which people were interested in a blackberry was missing after the licensing happened and a lot of things that they just were using on a trial and error basis i guess to see which one of that could work sadly none of that worked which stopped the blackberry manufacturers by the year 2015 16 a lot of you may not know this but the software support has stopped this year january yeah 22nd january 2022 was the time when it became non functional completely non functional and it just is extremely sad but i guess they were only responsible for putting themselves in a position like this right this is the difference steve jobs saw the downfall of ipod in a couple of years from now and immediately started working on something that could keep the company growing that could keep the company unforgettable and apple's approach has always been sleek apple's approach has always been futuristic coming up with a product that would not be seen in the market nothing like that would be seen in the market and so people would want to buy it not just that a lot of personalized touches also add to it the fact that how simple and flexible and convenient the entire apple ecosystem has become for us today was what was foreseen by steve jobs two decades from now because he knew that if this is not something that he is envisioning apple wouldn't survive as a company apple wouldn't be able to meet the expectations of the audience which they did not even know that the customers are expecting this at that point of time i mean we as customers a lot of time don't know right that this is what we want for the market unless it is shown to us and steve jobs saw that blackberry on the other hand never saw this never understood it and just tried to beat the competition by including all the things that they did not have which turned into a major failure now this is the point we're talking about where blackberry's brightest minds had already left and joined apple providing more insights to apple as a company of how to beating the competition and that's it that's how blackberry died blackberry did not see the development in bbm they did not expand it they could have grown it into a multi billion dollar messenger had they wanted it to but now by the time yeah they never did yeah they never really did it not just bbm at this point the devices never really changed its shape and appearance also i mean what even was a blackberry phone wasn't a rectangle it wasn't something sleek also by the time we had much thinner phones with full screen displays 
and this wasn't a rectangle this sound this looked like a like a credit card right that was that was the shape that blackberry was trying to imitate with the thickness still intact so they did not improve from that angle as well they couldn't keep up with the competition they tried to come up with an approach of beating the company by having all the things that apple did not have well that's pretty much what went down between blackberry and apple and that's how blackberry massively failed but there's more than what appeals to the eye and if you want to know the entire fuel and the entire struggle you'll have to tune into your audio streaming platform and listen to the podcast where we've given a raw unfiltered version of the whole thing so guys just take your phones um listen to the igeeks blog show on spotify apple podcast or any audio streaming platform that you have to know an exaggerated version of this This is Harshanki signing off. I'm going to see you guys next week. Let's stay connected on our social media channels till then to keep talking about Apple ecosystem. We're available everywhere as iGeeks Blogs. Don't forget to hit that button and keep listening to the iGeeks Blog show. Bye.